time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the charming and humorous young gentleman who stars in his own television program five nights a week here in New York, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. And on my left, the lovely lady of radio and television who has just been named Woman of the Year by the Father's Day Committee, Miss Arlene Francis. And they sure are here to stay, those fathers. <laughs> <laughs> and on my left, our panelist publisher, whose column in this week uh, today was even punnier than usual. <laughs> and read by thousands, too. Oh, millions, all right. Ben and Sir. <laughs> Well, on my left is a gentleman for whom I have considerable regard. He's a senior panel moderator from Johannesburg, South Africa, just been recessing in Hon Honolulu, Mr. John Daly. Thank you, man. And I must say, I've got to recommend that Honolulu. I think, I don't want to get into any politics, but I sure think we ought to make uh, Hawaii a state quick before something else happens to it. That's a wonderful country. And United, by the way, fulfilled their promise. We had breakfast in New York, lunch in San Francisco, and dinner out there in Hawaii, all in one day. And tonight, we're back again up to our old tricks. We have some nice folks who've got some wonderfully interesting occupations, the kind of occupations which we feel might give our friends on the panel a bit of trouble. We want our guests to have some fun and carry home small prizes to remember us by. We'll have a famous guest challenger later, too, but let's see what the experts can do with our first challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Helen Cutillo, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Well, Mrs. Cutillo, where are you from? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, there's nothing that affects those four characters over there quite so much as the spirit of brotherhood, so you can go over there and don't even have to be afraid. Just let them see. <laughs> Stella? What do you call that kind of a hat you have on? It's got a pillbox. 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 Sort of. Howdy. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Come on over here now and join me, if you will. Uh, this time, I think you probably know, we give them one free guess as to what you might do, and we always begin those free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a librarian. A librarian, Mr. Allen. Since she's carrying a pillbox, I think she's a pharmacist. <laughs> Miss Van. I think she works at the lingerie counter in John Wanamaker's. Mr. Seth. No, she just moved over to Strawbridge and Clothes. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Cotillo. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. <laughs> and Mrs. Cotillo, I rather imagine the panel's going to have a little trouble. <laughs> you know how we score this thing? We flip the lid every time you say no, huh? That's right. You're all set? I'm all set. All right, Mrs. Cotillo is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Cotillo? I do. Is there any product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. <laughs> Mr. Well? Sir. Mrs. Cotillo, you perform a service for this profit-making corporation. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, do you come in direct contact with the people for whom you perform this service? Yes. You do? Do they come to you? Yes. Yes, in a way. Are you uh, usually seated while you're performing a service? Yes. You are? Yes. Uh, do, do you wear some kind of, of a uniform? That is a dress other than what you would wear, say, being a guest on this show? Uh, yes. You do? Mm hmm Is it uh, the same color uniform, usually? Yes. Would it be white? Small color. I mean, before it gets dirty. <laughs> oh, white with stripes, probably. Did you say, is it white, Benny? 
Is there some white in it? There, there are my <laughs> Mr. Gold, Miss Gilgallis. Well, would you like to give us any explanation of why there was uh, uh, so much doubt about whether it was white or not, John? Uh, actually, I wouldn't. <laughs> I think so, but I thought I'd try. No, it's just it was a point which I felt I ought to clear up thoroughly, you see, with Mrs. Cotillo, so that neither one of us would uh, unintentionally mislead you. Oh, now I don't Lord think we will bed. mislead you. Hmm. Uh, Mrs. Cotillo, you're wearing a sleeveless dress now. Are there sleeves in what you wear ordinarily yes. in your work? Yes. Uh, do you come in contact with both sexes in your work? Yes. And uh, do you do something for them that uh, enhances their existence in some way? I would say that it enhances their existence in some way, yeah. Uh, can you perform this service for quite a number of people in one day? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I would think so. Is there anything uh, entertaining or um, enlightening about your work? Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> John looks so <dumb. laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Cotillo says she has so much fun every day, it should be entertaining, but you're going to get a no anyway. <laughs> she entertained you, John. <laughs> You, you understand this, Dorothy, when we all is revealed. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Mrs. Cotillo, just to clear one thing up, I notice, uh, if you'll find me, a tiny scratch on your upper arm. Am I correct in guessing that has nothing to do with your work? Nothing. Yes, it has nothing to do with her work. Not at all, no. <laughs> well, I'm glad of that. Um, do you work indoors, usually? In no. Hmm. Well, I think I've died in a good cause. Oh, my goodness. What is life? I may not go back to Hawaii yet. <laughs> it's like Cohn and McCarthy over there. <laughs> hmm? yeah. I think we would have to say indoors, yeah. Hmm. Then you must sometimes work outdoors, do you? Because you said... Uh... Oh, I just got a weenie. I have no, an idea, no. too. We no. No. Four down and six to go, Miss well, Francis. Everybody all around me has ideas. Could I just listen to them for a minute? Fifteen seconds Did for a Did you have a feeling, Bennett, that it was something that she was in, but it was out of yeah, doors? Might be a cashier's right. cage. She was indoors and outdoors at the same time. It's a little cashier's yes. cage. Well, it has nothing to do with entertainment, so I don't see how it can be a cashier's her work wasn't entertaining. Well, maybe it has something to do with transportation. Maybe That's indoors and outdoors at the same time. time. All right, the 15 seconds is up for the conference. Will you proceed with the questioning, Miss Trump? I think Dorothy's had a real hot flash there. <laughs> Mrs. Cotillo, do you have anything to do with transportation? Yes. Uh, is the uniform you wear something that you wear while you are transporting people? Yes. Uh, would you be in the driver's seat ever? Yes. And what you drive has four wheels? No. Only two wheels? Whoa, that's right. Five down and five to go, sir. Uh, well, it ha hasn't got uh, four wheels? No. Well, may I ask, instead of going on the surface, does it go up and down? Up and down like this? No. 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 <laughs> well, oh, in, in this, were you including this, John? Well, I presume that everything that moves on any plane may find variance in the plane factor. Oh, I thought you were making a helicopter movement <laughs> as opposed to plane. Oh, no, yeah. no. I... In other words, whatever you do, it is on the surface of the Earth? Yes. Yeah. Well, does it have more than four wheels? Yes. Yeah. Uh, does it go within the city's limits? Yes. Yeah. something can be found in the city? Is it a bus? No. No. Let's no. seven down and three to go. And actually, we just haven't got any more time, so we'll trolley trolley the rest of the cars. cars. You got it. It's Thank a trolley car, car, but we didn't have the time. Still have trolleys. Uh, Mrs. Cotillo drives a streetcar or trolley car in the Philadelphia transit system, which is privately owned. And I'm going to ride trolleys here. <laughs> Thanks for being our guest. It was wonderful to have you. Here. All right, now let's see what we can do with. Uh, Another challenger panel. You've got that one right on the line. Will you sign in, please, sir? Fred 
T, or third, sorry, third T. Hopkins, right there. for just a second and stand here with me long enough to tell me where you're from, Mr. Hopkins. Uh, I live in uh, the town of Somers, Westchester County. Oh, you're practically a neighbor to everybody here then, so... Uh... I, I imagine so. There's a lot of people go up to Westchester over the weekend. There's... Well, we've got four here who didn't, who would like to know you a bit better. So would you just walk over there and let them see you, please? <clears throat> you use the Harlem Division, Mr. Hopkins? Yes, sir. Well... You look pretty good anyhow. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hopkins. Oh, hi, Got a nice grip. Well, you know, you're all right. Well, thank you. Oh, Mr. Hopkins. Oh, all right, Mr. Hopkins, over here, if you will, and sit down next to me. And what happens right here is that the panel, having had a chance to shake your hand and to meet you, gets one free guess as to what you might do. And we always begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think he's an alderman. A little closer. An alderman, mm -hmm. did you say? Mr. Allen. I think he's a member of the Westchester Chamber of Commerce. Miss Francis. I think he's a railroad man. Mr. Sir. I think he's been counting proxies in that young white fight for the New York Senate. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Ferd T. Hopkins, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> Mr. Hopkins, the panel has got to dig. You know how we score this thing? Uh, Every time you give a no answer, I yeah. flip your ten flips and you've won the game. All right, uh, Mr. Hopkins is self-employed. Let's begin the uh, questioning with Steve Allen. Mr. Hopkins, is there a product connected with your work in any way? A product? Yes. Good. To ask a classic question now, is it something that I might ever come into contact with? Yes. If I did, might it possibly make me happy? If you did come in contact, could it possibly make you happy? Mm-hmm. Yes. The lady giggled at that. You very often play tricks on me around here. Is this perhaps something that uh, a woman might be able to use? Yes. Might a woman ever use this on a, a special occasion? Yes. June is uh, kind of sneaking up on us here. Could a bride ever use this thing? Yeah. Might she possibly uh, take it along with her on the honeymoon? Uh, is this something a woman might use to make her look more kissable or something of that sort? Of I would say this, and I think Mr. Hopkins might agree, there are certain circumstances under which a woman or a bride might take this to make her more kissable, yeah. <laughs> you agree, Mr. Hopkins? Yeah. Was there something a woman would select uh, to match her complexion? <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Hopkins, is this anything that is taken internally? It is. Uh, is it, uh, is it liquid rather than solid? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. I was a little off the track myself. <coughs> it is a solid, then. Is it a kind of food? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. It's taken internally deliberately? <laughs> yes. Uh, does it have, um some properties which make it uh, advantageous to take this? Yes. It's really good for you? Yes. <laughs> well, does it have any uh, other properties, such as uh, it tastes good, or it's fun to take, or it has an effect on you? There's no taste to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hopkins, much nicer than you, John. <laughs> I didn't want to close it in just in the matter of taste. Does it have an effect that is fun? 
Well, I mean, I just, I gave you a know-how. I think when you find out, it is not, right. uh, it does, has no connotation that I think we could ascribe in the general area in which the question was asked. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Is it in any loose way medicinal or something of that sort? I want you yes. to make it as loose as possible now. Yes. <laughs> you make it loose. Uh, is it the sort of thing you might take to clear up a headache or something of that sort? Uh, You've been drinking too much? Or? Well, I, I think you have to be a little more specific because you've gotten into the medic medicinal classification and you can get so broad in here that we could mislead you and we don't want to. Would you take it in oh, pill oh, form? Oh. Pill form? Perhaps so. Perhaps so. Uh, yes, stretch the point. You want to give him a break? Oh, yes. Yeah. We, capsule will we call heard a pill. It. You go ahead. Capsule. I have capsule that in form. mind. That, uh, <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> All those pills with a jacket on it, you know. <laughs> Well, sir, it's in capsules. Uh, is it out and out to make you more healthy? That sort of thing. At, I'm thinking now of something like vitamins. Or oh, that, thank so. you very much, Steve. That's five down and five right. to go, Miss Pratt. Oh, boy, I was right with you. It's in capsule form. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And a bride might take it to make her feel better. Yes, ma'am. Chance of barbiturates? <laughs> no. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hawkins, might, might this be something that would make a bride be more kissable? Make her more kissable? <laughs> yeah. Well, the question was asked, Ben, and we said under certain conditions it might be construed as a product which would make a bride more kissable if she wished at that time to be kissable, yes. Well, would this pepper up in some way? It would, yes. It would? It comes in caps. Has it got iron in it? No, sir. No iron, and I'm going to ring down the door because we've used up all our time. You were all, you were skating right around the rink, actually, because Mr. Hopkins makes a seasick remedy that comes in capsule form, makes it feel better if you got sick. Thank you very no, much, no, Mr. Hopkins. Yes, if you will. We had a great time. <laughs> <party. laughs> so now it's time for the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My uh, colleagues have blindfolders for this special part of the program, and the blindfolders are all in place, are they, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, Good. Sir. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with the preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in any form of the entertainment business? I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer this first one because it's a big hurdle. Yes. <laughs> well, are you in show business? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever been on the New York stage? <laughs> Are you a woman? <laughs> a bird woman? <laughs> uh, you must have a very distinctive voice because you're going to such pains to disguise it, have you? Uh, are you a singer? Yeah, <laughs> I'll answer that for sure. Uh, Won't be after this. Are... <laughs> I think I'm getting a message here. Um, are you a singer who has appeared both in nightclubs and in on the New York stage? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, are you famous for your um, fondness for and relationship to Santa Claus? Do that again? <laughs> well, I'm thinking of someone who is rather, is rather prominently connected with Santa Claus. 
And I don't mean the one who saw Mommy kissing. I, uh, uh... Well, do you, would you like me to ask another question? Yeah, that'd be because great. Because I could be so wrong. Uh, the show that you were in, in New York, was it a review rather than a book show? Uh-huh. Have you ever appeared in motion pictures, too? <laughs> Might you be described as sinuous in your performances? Yeah, yeah. Are you Eartha Kitt? Eartha Kitt is right. Well, Miss Kidd, I must say, I'm sorry we didn't give him a rougher time, but I hope you enjoyed your visit as brief as it was. I certainly did. You've given so much pleasure to so many other people that uh, we hope that you had little pleasure coming to see us. Good to see you. Would you say hello to the panel? All right, panel, a distinguished record tonight. Actually, you had tough ones and you fought a good battle. Let's see if you can come out shining with victory, too. Let's have one more challenge. Will you come in and sign in, please? Ina Tarasevich, is that right? Miss, is it? Miss. And where are you from? Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. Well, we're a little short of time, so I would ask you to just to look at this formidable array of people over here. <laughs> then come on over and sit down with me. The panel has uh, had a small chance to know you. On that basis, we'll still give them their free guess, which we always begin with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a translator for the United Nations. A translator. Mr. Allen. A hairdresser. Miss Francis. Works in City Hall. Mr. Sir. Models for Bamberger's. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at uh, Miss Tarasevich. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is, but the panel has to beg. You know how we score this here thing. Panel, you have somewhat less than three minutes to go, so I will just tell you that uh, Miss Tarasevich is self-employed, and we'll begin the general questioning with Bennett, sir. Ms. Tarasevich, do you perform a service of some kind? Yes, I do. Mind I avail myself of that oh, service? Yes. <laughs> well, would I, would I find it a pleasant experience? Oh, I think so. Do you think you'd do me some good? Mm. Yes. Do you? Uh, would I uh, be in close contact with you while you're performing this service? No. I would not. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would Bennett, if he were availing himself of your service, be indoors? Yes, he would. You're indoors during most of your work? Yes. Do you work in what might be called an office? No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Could you help other people than Bennett at the same moment you were helping him? Yes. To the same degree and in the same way, yeah. Good. I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I want you. <laughs> There. Do you instruct in any way? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is your service available to women as well as to men? Yes. And uh, they come indoors. If it is, uh, would it in any way be a place where anything is served? Yes. Would it be a place that might be something like a restaurant or a hot dog wagon or a bar? <laughs> yes. Uh, is it... Um, I must choose now, I suppose. Is it a place where any um, uh, liquid refreshment is served? Yes. Well, actually, we'd have to be honest and tell you that, you know, in any of those places, you'd be expected that you could get water, you know. <laughs> yes, of course, but we can't say Coca-Cola. Uh, what, <laughs> what about um, <laughs> there being any alcoholic content in the liquid? Would there be any of that? Yes. Do you work in a place that might be considered a, a, a bar restaurant? Yes. I'm afraid we've run out of okay. time, but Arlene, I'm afraid you've also, you've got it. But you get the full prize by default of time because Miss Tarasevich owns and operates a bar. That's hmm. what she does. And Clever. Thanks for being our guest on that. Until next week. 
This is John Daly saying good night. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is the last we're going to see of uh, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen for two weeks. So instead of saying good night, we'll say have a grand time in Europe, Miss Dorothy. Thank you, John. And I know that everybody is going to be pleased to know that sitting in for me will be our friend who sat in for me once before on a very happy occasion, Miss Margaret Truman. Good night, Steve. That's good news. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, boys. Good night, Arlene. Good night, uh, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy is Miss... Cat with face, they see both. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Described as sinuous. In your performances? Yeah, yeah. Are you Eartha Kitt? Eartha Kitt is right. <laughs> well, Miss Kitt, I must say, I'm sorry we didn't give him a rougher time, but I hope you enjoyed your visit as brief as it was. I certainly did. You've given so Thank much pleasure much. to so many other people that uh, we hope that you had little pleasure coming to see us. I Good to did. see you. Okay. Would you say good hello to the panel? All right, panel, a distinguished record tonight, actually. You had tough ones and you fought a good battle. Let's see if you can come out shining with victory, too. Let's have one more challenge. Would you come in and sign in, please? Ena Tarasevich, is that right? Miss, is it? Miss. And where are you from? Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. Well, we're a little short of time, so I would ask you to just to look at this formidable array of people over here. <laughs> then come on over and sit down with me. The panel has uh, had a small chance to know you. On that basis, we'll still give them their free guess, which we always begin with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a translator for the United Nations. A translator. Mr. Allen. A hairdresser. Miss Francis. Works in City Hall. Mr. Sir. Models for Bamberg's. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at uh, Miss Tarasevich. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is, but the panel has to be. You know how we score this here thing. Panel, you have somewhat less than three minutes to go. So I will just tell you that uh, Miss Tarasevich is self-employed, and we'll begin the general questioning with Bennett Sir. Ms. Tarasavis, do you perform a service of some kind? Yes, I do. Mind I avail myself of that oh, service? Yes. <laughs> well, would I, would I find it a pleasant experience? Oh, I think so. Do you think you'd do me some good? Mm. Yes. Do you? Uh, would I uh, be in close contact with you while you're performing this service? No. I would That's not. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would Bennett, if he were availing himself of your service, be indoors? Or... Yes, he would. You're indoors during most of your work? Yes. Do you work in what might be called an office? No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Could you help other people than Bennett at the same moment you were helping him? Yes. To the same degree and in the same way, yeah. Good. I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I want you. <laughs> There. Do you instruct in... All right. Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with the preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in any form of the entertainment business? I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> I'll answer this first one because it's a big hurdle. Yes. <laughs> well, are you in show business? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever been on the New York stage? <laughs> are you a woman? A bird woman. <laughs> a 
Uh, you must have a very distinctive voice because you're going to such pains to disguise it, have you? Uh, are you a singer? Yeah, <laughs> I'll answer that for sure. Uh, Won't be after this. <laughs> I... <laughs> getting a message here. Um, are you a singer who has appeared both in nightclubs and in on the New York stage? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, are you famous for your um, fondness for and relationship to Santa Claus? Do that again? <laughs> someone who is rather is rather prominently connected with Santa Claus and I don't mean the one who saw mommy kissing I uh, uh... well do you would you like me to ask another question yeah that'd be because great because I could be so wrong uh, the show that you were in in New York was it a review rather than a book show Mm -hmm. Have you ever appeared in motion pictures, too? <laughs> Might you be described as sinuous in your performances? Yeah, yeah. Are you Eartha Kitt? Eartha Kitt is right! <laughs> well, Miss Kitt, I must say, I'm sorry we didn't give him a rougher time, but I hope you enjoyed your visit as brief as it was. I certainly did. You've given so Thank much pleasure much. to so many other people that uh, we hope that you had little pleasure. Oh, that kind of a hat you have on. It's got a pillbox. Pillbox. It's like pillbox. Sort of. Howdy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over here now and join me, if you will. Uh, this time, I think you probably know, we give them one free guess as to what you might do, and we always begin those free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a librarian. A librarian, Mr. Allen. Since she's carrying a pillbox, I think she's a pharmacist. <laughs> Miss Benton. I think she works at the lingerie counter in John Wanamaker's. Mr. Seth. No, she just moved over to Strawbridge and Clothes. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Cotillo. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. And Mrs. Cotillo, I rather imagine the panel's going to have a little trouble. <coughs> you know how we score this thing? We flip the lid every time you say no, huh? That's right. You're all set? I'm all set. All right, Mrs. Cotillo is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Cotillo? I do. Is there any product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. <laughs> Mr. Well? Sir. Mrs. Cotillo, you perform a service for this profit-making corporation. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, do you come in direct contact with the people for whom you perform this service? Yes. You do? Do they come to you? Yes. Yes, in a way. Are you uh, usually seated while you're performing this service? Yes. You are? Yes. Uh, do, do you wear some kind of, of a uniform? That is a dress other than what you would wear, say, being a guest on this show? Uh, yes. You do? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, the same color uniform, usually? Yes. Would it be white? Small cut. I mean, before it gets dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, white with stripes, probably. Did you say, is it white, Benny? Is there some white in it? There, there are my things I've ever seen. Go down, Mr. Gold, Mr. Gallagher. Well, would you like to give us any explanation of why there was uh, uh, so much doubt about whether it was white or not, John? Uh, actually, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so, but I thought I'd try. No, it's just it was a point which I felt I ought to clear up thoroughly, you see, with Mrs. Cotillo, so that neither one of us would uh, unintentionally mislead you. Oh, now I don't Lord think we will bear. mislead you. Hmm. Uh, Mrs. Cotillo, you're wearing a sleeveless dress now. Are there sleeves in what you wear? Ordinarily yes. in your work? Yes. Uh, do you come in contact with both sexes in your work? Yes. 
And uh, do you do something for them that uh, enhances their existence in some way? Small prizes to remember us by. We'll have a famous guest challenger later, too, but let's see what the experts can do with our first challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Helen Cutillo, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Well, Mrs. Cotillo, where are you from? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, there's nothing that affects those four characters over there quite so much as the spirit of brotherhood. So you can go over there and don't even have to be afraid. Just let them see. <laughs> Tell her. What do you call that kind of a hat you have on? It's got a pillbox. 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 Sort of. Howdy. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Come on over here now and join me, if you will. Uh, this time, I think you probably know, we give them one free guess as to what you might do, and we always begin those free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a librarian. A librarian, Mr. Allen. Since she's carrying a pillbox, I think she's a pharmacist. <laughs> Miss Benton. I think she works at the lingerie counter in John Wanamaker's. Mr. Seth. No, she just moved over to Straw Bridge and Clothes. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Cotillo. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. And Mrs. Cotillo, I rather imagine the panel's going to have a little trouble. <coughs> you know how we score this thing? We flip the lid every time you say no, huh? That's right. You're all set? I'm all set. All right, Mrs. Cotillo is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Cotillo? I do. Is there any product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. <laughs> Mr. Well? Sir. Mrs. Cotillo, you perform a service for this profit-making corporation. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, do you come in direct contact with the people for whom you perform this service? Yes. You do? Do they come to you? Yes. Yes, in a way. Are you uh, usually seated while you're performing this service? Yes. You are? Yes. Uh, do, do you wear some kind of, of a uniform? That is a dress other than what you would wear, say, being a guest on this show? Uh, yes. You do? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, the same color uniform, usually? Yes. Would it be white? Small cut. I mean, before it gets dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's white with stripes, probably. Did you say, is it white, Benny? Is there some white in it? There, there are my questions. Go down. Let's go. Miss Gilgallon. Well, would you like to give us any explanation of why the... Well, I mean, this week, uh, today was even punnier than usual. <laughs> and read by thousands, too. Oh, millions, all right. Ben and Sir. <laughs> well, on my left is a gentleman for whom I have considerable regard. He's a senior panel moderator from Johannesburg, South Africa. Just been recessing in Hon Honolulu, Mr. John Daly. I must say, I gotta recommend that Honolulu. I think, I don't want to get into any politics, but I sure think we ought to make uh, Hawaii a state quick before something else happens to it. That's a wonderful country. And United, by the way, fulfilled their promise. We had breakfast in New York, lunch in San Francisco, and dinner out there in Hawaii, all in one day. And tonight, we're back again up to our old tricks. We have some nice folks who've got some wonderfully interesting occupations, the kind of occupations which we feel might give our friends on the panel a bit of trouble. We want our guests to have some fun and carry home small prizes to remember us by. We'll have a famous guest challenger later, too, but let's see what the experts can do with our first challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Helen Cutillo, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Well, Mrs. Cotillo, where are you from? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, there's nothing that affects those four characters over there quite so much as the spirit of brotherhood. So you can go over there and don't even have to be afraid. Just let them see. Tell her. What do you call that kind of a hat you have on? It's got a pillbox. 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 Sort of. Howdy. Yeah. Come on over here now and join me, if you will. 
Uh, this time, I think you probably know, we give them one free guess as to what you might do, and we always begin those free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a librarian. A librarian, Mr. Allen. Since she's carrying a pill box, I think she's a pharmacist. <laughs> Miss Benton. I think she works at the lingerie counter in John Wanamaker's. Mr. Seth. Now she just moved over to Strawbridge and Clothes. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Cotillo. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. And Mrs. Cotillo, I rather imagine the panel's going to have a little trouble. <coughs> you know how we score this thing? We flip the lid every time you say no, huh? That's right. You're all set? I'm all set. All right, Mrs. Cotillo is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Cotillo? I do. Is there any product involved in what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. <laughs> Mr. Well? Sir. Mrs. Cotillo, you perform a service for this profit-making corporation. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, do you sometimes work outdoors, do you? Because you said, uh... Well... Oh, I just got a weenie. I have no, an idea, no. too. No. no. Four down and six to go, Miss well, Francis. Everybody all around me has ideas. Could I just listen to them for a minute? Fifteen well, seconds Did you have a feeling, Bennett, that it was something that she was in, but it was out of doors? Yeah, might be a cashier's right. cage She was indoors and something. outdoors at the same time. It's a little cashier's yes. cage. Well, it has nothing to do with entertainment, so I don't see how it can be said a cashier's her work wasn't Well, maybe it has something to do with transportation. And That's indoors and outdoors and at the same time. time. All right, the 15 seconds is up for the conference. Will you proceed with the questioning, Miss Prompt? I think Dorothy's had a real hot flash there. <laughs> Mrs. Cotillo, do you have anything to do with transportation? Yes. Uh, is the uniform you wear something that you wear while you are transporting people? Yes. Uh, would you be in the driver's seat ever? Yes. And what you drive has four wheels? No. Only two wheels? Whoa, that's right. Five down and five to go, sir. Uh, well, it ha hasn't got uh, four wheels? No. Well, may I ask, instead of going on the surface, does it go up and down? Up and down like this? No. 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 <laughs> well, oh, in, in, in this, were you including this, John? Well, I presume that everything that moves on any plane may find variance in the plane factor. Oh, I thought Bennett you were making a helicopter movement as opposed to plane. Uh, oh, no, yeah. no. I... In other words, whatever you do, it is on the surface of the Earth? Yes. Yeah. Well, does it have more than four wheels? Yes. Yeah. Uh, does it go within the city's limits? Yes. Yeah. Something can be found in the city? Is it a bus? No. 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 Let's no. seven down and three to go. And actually, we just haven't got any more time, so we'll trip cars? the rest of the cars. cars. You got it. It's Thank a trolley car, car, but we didn't have the time to do it. Uh, Mrs. Cotillo drives a streetcar or trolley car in the Philadelphia transit system, which is privately owned. And I'm going to ride trolleys here at <laughs> Thanks for being our guest. It was wonderful to have you here. All right, now let's see what we can do with... Uh, Another challenger panel. You've got that one right on the line. Will you sign in, please, sir? Fred T. or Third, sorry. Third T. Hopkins. Right there. for just a second and stand here with me long enough to tell me where you're from, Mr. Hopkins. Uh, I live in uh, town of Somers.